Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to be here in Beijing and to be able to speak with you at this first uh, LC3 event in China. Um, to start with, how many of you are familiar with OpenStack? OK. I have a couple of slides on OpenStack uh, that I can uh, get to for those of you that, that didn't raise your hand. OpenStack, as Jim mentioned, is an open source project. And uh, as you heard from, uh, from our previous speaker, uh, it, it's used as software that can create clouds, can create private clouds, public clouds. And, uh, and what that means is that you can take all of the servers and the storage in your data center, put an API on them, and then uh, automate it and build lots of products and services on top of that. So that's, uh, that's pretty useful and, uh, in, in a lot of different areas. When we ask people why they use OpenStack, these are the top three reasons that they tell us. Um, they're able to reduce their costs. They're able to uh, be more efficient in their operations. And they're able to move faster. And as we heard from some of the previous speakers, that last one is especially important in today's economy. And it's something that is uh, on the minds of everyone in business and, and really in every organization, uh, how do you go faster and how do you accomplish your goals more quickly? And I think that one of the things that's really interesting about where we are in, uh, in technology right now is that software has become a really key part of meeting all of our organization's goals. I want to talk a little bit more about that in a bit. But first of all, um, so who's using OpenStack in these ways? A lot of companies across many, many industries. And you'll notice some leading companies from China up here as well, like China Union Pay, State Grid, JD.com, uh, Dongfeng Motors, and others. And all over the world, we have, we have OpenStack users um, who are using OpenStack for all kinds of use cases. Um, if you go to, uh, to our website at openstack.org slash users, you can find lots of examples of, of what people are doing with it and how they are um, you know, using OpenStack to build clouds in their businesses. When I say that a lot of people are using OpenStack, that includes big companies like Fortune, uh, Fortune 100 companies. Over half of them um, have OpenStack deployed. But it also includes many, many small companies, um, universities, research institutions. And around the world, there are over 5 million physical cores of computing power that, uh, that we've been able to track that, that are managed by OpenStack. So that's pretty cool to think about. 5 million cores of, uh, of capacity, um, all in these clouds, and all being used to accomplish um, different kinds of research and business goals. Now, um, as Jim mentioned, I'm from the, the OpenStack Foundation, which is uh, similar to the Linux Foundation. We are uh, an organization that manages the community of software developers who uh, create OpenStack and also the users that consume it and build clouds with it. And the OpenStack Foundation has strong support from many companies around the world. These are just our uh, platinum and gold members. And again, you'll notice that we have a lot of representation from China in here. And, and it's actually been the fastest growing area of the world for us over the last two years. Um, companies like Huawei are very involved in OpenStack, both in terms of developing the software, but also in creating products and in helping companies all around the world to use OpenStack. And we also have a number of startup companies who are here in Beijing and also in Shanghai uh, who have uh, created new businesses around OpenStack. Um, companies like EasyStack. EasyStack recently raised 50 million US dollars in venture funding. And they are, they're based here in Beijing. Um, United Stack, 99 Cloud, and others, as well as very big companies like ZTE and, uh, and um, H3C and others. So the, uh, the, the China community within um, OpenStack is very strong and growing. And, uh, and so I, I uh, here in Beijing this week, and I'll actually be coming back in a month for another event. 
And overall, it's a very large global community that, uh, that makes up OpenStack. So how does this community work? You know, if you are interested in, in being part of open source, as we've heard about a lot today, what are the things that, that you need to do and that you should, should try to, uh, to do? Well, being at an event like this is a great step to getting involved in open source. As we've heard, there are leaders from the Linux community, as well as um, exciting new projects like Kubernetes and Hyperledger and others all here. And so this is a great event to come to, to meet people who are contributing to this software, and to be able to find out how you can get involved. And then once you do that, then all of these open source communities, they use many tools online um, in order to, to collaborate. And that sometimes that can be a, a difficult thing and, and, and can be um, kind of frightening at first to get involved in. But as you begin to participate in these communities, you'll find that it is, uh, it's very rewarding to work with with very smart developers from all over the world and from many companies and many industries together as you, as you uh, build this software together. And uh, in, in the OpenStack community, OpenStack was started in the US, but very quickly we had uh, developers from, um, from China as well as other countries that started to get involved. And those developers have helped our community become more friendly and uh, more welcoming to to companies and, and to developers from all over the world. And so if you join a community, you know, participate, and also um, help them understand you know, what we can do to better serve you and our communities. Things like having meetings in a time zone that is, uh, that's you know, better for you, uh, making sure that we put effort into translation. You know, these are all things that software projects need, and uh, they are ways that you can have an impact in these communities. OpenStack, uh, this is a, a chart of the contributions that have come into OpenStack over the last few years, and you'll see that it, it continues to grow. Over 100,000 change sets um, from 3,500 developers in 2016 was, uh, was what we had. And we added 1,600 new developers last year. About 250 of those new developers were from here in China. So it's a very big area of, of growth. And our process, we work on a six-month release process. And then uh, every six months, we have a new release of OpenStack. And then that gets turned into products and services that, uh, that companies can consume and, uh, and, and build their businesses off of. So that's a little bit about OpenStack. And what I wanted to talk about to, uh, to finish up is a little bit more about open source overall. I've been involved in open source for a couple of decades now. And uh, a lot of the things that we heard Jim talk about and that we heard Professor Liu talk about, I also believe very strongly. Open source, I believe, is absolutely about freedom, about sharing but it is also about a better way to create intellectual property. And I think that uh, this is a, a motto that we have in, uh, in the OpenStack community, collaborate or die. <laughs> and I think that this is the reality for all of us now, whether we are in an open source community, whether we are in a business or a research institution, but we have to share information and we have to share the work as we create uh, new intellectual property. And why is that? Why is that? Well, I think that it fundamentally has to do with the state of computing and information today. This is a picture of me with my first computer. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was always a dork. Um, that computer was, this is in the, in the 80s, and that computer was a very powerful computer for the time. And it cost um, about 5,000 US dollars. And so it was, uh, you know, it, was, it was the computer that I learned to program on and uh, that I started to, to kind of begin my career in, in computer science. However, that computer is uh, not very powerful by today's terms. You know, the phone I have in my pocket is about three times 
more powerful, has about 3,000 times more capacity than that computer that I, that I first started using. So I'm walking around with millions of dollars of computing power in my pocket. And it's not just our cell phones. We know that there are smart home devices, smart cars. And basically what that means is that we are surrounded by supercomputers. You know, everyone has a supercomputer in their pocket, a supercomputer in their car, and, uh, and just incredible amounts of computing capacity in data centers around the world. And what that is doing is it's enabling us to take on new challenges that we never would have thought about before. So this is a picture from a keynote that was given in, at the OpenStack Summit in Barcelona by Dr. Rosie Bolton. Dr. Bolton is a physicist who studies the universe. And the picture behind her is a radio telescope image of a galaxy that's uh, far out in space. And so what, what she works on is, um, is a new project that's called the Square Kilometer Array. Has anyone heard of the Square Kilometer Array? Yes, OK, a, a few people. So the Square Kilometer Array is a radio telescope that is in the desert in South Africa and in the desert in Western Australia. And it is a 50-year project to create the biggest science instrument that we have ever created in human history. And with it, we will be able to look out farther into space than ever before, see larger pieces of the universe than we ever have before, and uh, better understand you know, the nature of um, the physical world, that, that uh, the physical universe that we live in. However, this creates a massive computing problem because the square kilometer array, when it comes online, will generate 5,000 petabytes every day of data. 5,000 petabytes. And within its first decade of operation, that will grow to 100,000 petabytes per day. And so they need more and more computing capacity but they also need better and more advanced systems to be able to analyze that, interpret it, and handle it. And so as you look at all of the progress that we're going to make as humans, you see that more and more human achievement is directly linked to our ability to make use of computing power. And software is the key to unlocking that computing power. And when software is now strategic to every organization that is out there, I think that really changes fundamentally the way that we should create software, that we should use software, um, and that we should build ecosystems of companies around it. And that is really why I believe so powerfully that open source is a better model for, for um, creating this intellectual property in software uh, and to go meet those goals like the square kilometer array and, uh, and other massive um, movements that, uh, that we're working on as humans. So you know, open source is really key to, to this kind of thing. I think that if you look at just one simple reason why, and this is something that I've seen many technology companies go through a shift over the last few years with, is that open source puts the user, it puts the requirements directly in the middle of the software development process. And that enables these communities to move more quickly and to solve the right use cases. Jim earlier talked about ecosystems and how sustainable ecosystems are key for open source. And when, uh, when we look at the ecosystem in open source and OpenStack, a lot of times we talk about three forces of an ecosystem. You have to have the technology, you have to have users, and you have to have that, uh, that ecosystem of companies who are building products and services and reinvesting in it. And if you get those in alignment, then you have a sustainable ecosystem that can create great technology for years and decades to come. The other trend that I think uh, we're seeing, too, is this idea that, that technology is being developed as open source first. Again, Jim touched on this, 
so I won't belabor the point, but if you look through the hottest areas of technology today with things like artificial intelligence and machine learning, you'll see that companies are not developing these systems in their own uh, organizations without sharing anything. They're actually, from the beginning, as open source, sharing systems like TensorFlow and Torch and on and on, Kafka and others. And it's an incredible uh, time that we live in where we can all have access to the technology that Google is building and that Huawei is building and that the scientists who are creating the square kilometer array are building. We can all have access to it and help them to develop the next wave of this. So, you know, if you look at something like machine learning, you have to have infrastructure for that. You have to have an application management layer. You have to have the machine learning tool itself. If you go back a couple of decades, this probably would have been a proprietary stack. But today, you can have OpenStack projects. You can have Kubernetes. You can have TensorFlow. You can have all of these systems working together to solve these problems in open source. So yes, I agree that open, sustainable ecosystems are really the future of how technology gets developed. And when you look at what we're all trying to do together, I think that rather than infrastructure for roads and airports and trains, we are actually creating infrastructure for ideas. And that is why compute and human achievement are so interlocked. So it's great to, uh, to be here at this first LinuxCon event in China. And uh, I'm so happy that all of you are joining us too. And hopefully, uh, you're already involved in open source, and if you're not, you can take this great opportunity to find different projects and start to get involved and help build this infrastructure for ideas and move everything forward. One last thing before I uh, go. Um, in this, uh, the China National Convention Center here, we are going to have an OpenStack event in just about a month, and uh, it's called OpenStack Days China. And if you are interested in, in learning more about OpenStack, and uh, Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes and, and these users that I talked about. Many of those projects and users will be back here in about a month, and you can, you can come uh, join us then as well. But thank you very much for, uh, for having me, and look forward to uh, seeing you this week.